It's the start of the week and that can only mean it's Monday malarkey. Welcome along for another edition, race 1.4. Uh, four weeks into the series and it's really getting hot. Tim Humpton setting the pace, uh, Lee Louie and the ladies. Uh, there's a lot to play for. Uh, Tim, uh, having won uh, the first race convincingly, nearly caught in the second, just got pipped on the third, uh, got a uh, few of his electric spirit riders along uh, in the third race. As the team's come into this. Now, we haven't got a team series yet, uh, but we are publishing the team's results, and there will be a team's classification eventually. It won't be for a couple of weeks, but uh, we're just testing it all out and running smoothly. It worked well last time, so I uh, hope it goes well this time. Let's have a look at the standings, excluding the teams, obviously, at the moment. And uh, it's, Oh, actually, I'm going to look at the route first. I beg your pardon. It's the um, two late loop, so we go up to one late, back down the coast, uh, along the coast and then inland do the other lake. Um, you see from the profile, uh, there's a bunch of hills about a quarter of the way into the race and there's a couple towards the end. Uh, that really coincides with us coming off the coast and going inland to those two lakes. Uh, there are some bumps there, some little steep bits, and I think that's where the race is going to be uh, blown apart. But remember, the other big factor on uh, Indy Velo is the wind. And along the coast, you can see that it twists and turns in and out of those coves and headlands. So the wind direction keeps changing. Uh, if you're in a group, sit at the back maybe, but uh, will it affect uh, people on breakaways, attacks and so on and so forth? We'll have to see. Uh, let's see if we can have a look at the uh, rankings. As I say, Tim Humpton, uh, ahead of Dan Stimson for R3R, uh, R3R, with Rob Miller from R3R in third. R3R with, uh, what, one, two, three, four riders uh, in the top ten, and that's, uh, that's going to be um, quite a challenge, I think. I think Electric Spirit have got riders in there and they can uh, work together, that'll be good. Saddle Drunk uh, putting in a good team as well, but I think Pete Mills is out this week and told me he was injured. OTR put a few riders in. CLS, who Lee Louis rides for. Shamu and Springer's missed uh, race because he would have been challenging up there too. And uh, Glasgow United, Stevie Cooper. Well, don't Glasgow United always perform. Let's go and have a look, see what it's like on the start line. Um, hopefully another busy race. Um, these have been quite good. Great to see everybody there. And uh, what's that, 42 on the uh, start line at the moment. 19 seconds to go. I'm guessing the uh, pen's closed now, or if it hasn't, it's about to. So that's probably, um, there's probably three bots in there. So there's probably 39 riders uh, on the start line. So looking forward to this one. Um, two seconds to go, one second to go, and off they go. And that... Uh, Phonetic start, as always at the beginning, will it split, will it split somebody off the front there, um, pretty much at the beginning, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it was Top Jimmy, by the way, Siren Linda, Siren Linda, I beg your pardon, uh, Top Jimmy just behind him, uh, Moron Sesson from ADR, Imo Van Burs, Rassio Racing, Tim Humpton in there, as you expect, Evan Oysenson from R3R again, Jorgen Van Burs, Rassio Racing, King Tubby, another R3R rider, and Brett Smith, South African riding for uh, West London VR at the moment. Uh, Marino Sesson for ADR, right out the front there. Uh, he's got a bit of power, this guy, and uh, I think he's going to get caught by the peloton in this one. The peloton pretty much together at the moment now, um, bashing out, uh, according to the uh, data, 20, uh, 27... Uh, well, no, sorry, that's distance to go. I'm reading the wrong thing, aren't I? Um, let's have a look at the speeds. You can't, uh, you can't quite tell at the moment, so the data's not on there. So let's uh, King Tarby now for R3R. Uh, R3R in those uh, light blue uh, kits. Rasmus Feld by uh, Feld Bell, uh, ECKD. That's the E-Cycling Club of Denmark as they go under that uh, marker. Now that's um, it's kind of an odd, uh, odd place to have that marker because uh, we have come up the coast a little bit already, uh, but it sort of makes more sense when you see how the race pans out. So Ingmar Van Burt, Horatio Racing ahead of Gordon Jackson. Gordon Jackson just taking a little turn on the front there for OTR. Uh, Stephen Lindorf, uh, Richard Gate in there. Uh, Alex Gold for Saddle Trunk up at seventh at the moment. Uh, Morton, uh, again from the last race, uh, did very well in the last race, finishing fourth, I believe. Uh, looking at the uh, kits, just so you can pick out riders, um, the green and whites are probably most likely to be uh, OTR riders. Uh, the um, black and... Uh, can't see one now, but I think with Alex Gold there, and the, it's just panning out. Alec, in the bottom uh, right of your screen, the black with the white and gold through uh, will be Alex Gold in the saddle trunk kit. The R3R riders, you can see there, yeah, homing in on that, you can see the distinctive blue, black and red um, 
Arthur Art jerseys. Uh, I'm just having a look who else is in there to see. For, as I say, the, those green and white ones are probably OTR riders. If you see something with blue bands across, it might be a West London rider. And uh, I think a little bit of guesswork. I know um, some of the... Oh, look at look at Sorrel Lindner off the front there. And that's quite a big gap now, isn't it? Two second gap on everybody else. It's a bit early to do this. Um, when you look at the profile along the bottom of the screen, um, you'll see that... Uh, You've got to get in about four or five kilometres before you get those hills. And I think those hills are going to make a big difference in this race. And uh, he's getting caught by uh, Jorgen van Bers. In fact, oh, the, is that Ingmar and Jorgen both in uh, this week? Oh, somebody else is going flying by. It's Soren Lindner. Uh, absolutely take it. I oh, know, Victor Wilking. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Uh, for BHC. BHC, uh, I think this is the first time he's been. Soren Lindner and uh, Stephen Ledendorf, all from BHC. So, and Sven uh, Kessie Dressy who has ridden in this series before. So four BHC riders this time. Um, they haven't had that many in before. And that's uh, look at the pressure on the front. And that's what it does when you put pressure on the front. It strings it all out. And people will get dropped off from this group. Uh, looking further down, um, some of the riders in this group. Seb Norman from uh, Electra Spirit, a teammate of Tim Hampton, of course. Top Jimmy. Matt James in there, another uh, Electra Spirit uh, Rider, Top Jimmy, West London, uh, Fleming back, another ECKD. Uh, strong club ECKD. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap here, isn't there? Um, we're watching Tony Martin late. Well, I think rides for OTR. He's probably uh, registered as Indy Velo, Fowdenhurst Club, but I think it's an OTR rider at 22nd. A little bit of gap there. You really want to hone that in. Uh, the R3, 3R, R3R riders here um, working together, and they are very coordinated. Just look at the way they're powering uh, to catch back up with that group. Uh, we're watching Tony Martin Lake at the moment, as we say. Uh, power of 335, cadence 97, better than anything I can do. 22nd at the moment. Uh, got all that batch of R3R riders who brought themselves back onto that little group. What great riding. That is teamwork at its best. Uh, well done, R3R. Very impressive too. Look at the front, Thomas Williams now, uh, no team. King Tubby from R3R just behind him. R3R riders everywhere, aren't they? Dan Stimson. Uh, Dan Stimson is the R3R man running the Tuesday teams on ND Velo, so look out for that one. And uh, don't forget, you can see the yellow around the side of the page. Um, Chase the Yellow is coming to Indy Velo. How good is that? So 29th of August, and um, just got a message here. Andy Evans just saying that he's... Uh, Missed the start because uh, he had a computer crash there, so it's a bit of a shame. And as I know, Pete Mills uh, said he rang in and said he's uh, injured. But uh, going back, this is uh, Chase, Chase the Yellow, sorry. Too many things going on at once. Coastal Loop, um, that's right around the island. That one's fairly flat for stage two. Stage three, locked and loaded. I haven't ridden that one, but I can uh, tell you that I have ridden all of those roads, and that will be uh, quite punchy. Crossover circuit, similarly, that is going to uh, go up and down over the top of the island. So uh, look out for that. Chase the Yellow coming on the 29th of August. And as I understand, that will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, for a couple of weeks. It's going to be fantastic. So we see the bunch here now. Um, just sitting behind Yep Snaver for R3R. R3R really dictating the race at the moment, aren't they? Uh, but the bunch has got together in that little sort of round group, which suggests that the pace isn't quite as tough as it was uh, when we saw them really strung out. Uh, we are, um, what, 16.6, so we're about 4 or 5 uh, K into the race, and we are going to have to go inland very, very shortly. If you look at the top right-hand corner, you can see the map, um, and it sort of kind of swings around these... Uh, headlands and covelands along the coast but then it will swing in and that's where we do a loop of the lake and that's where the lumps will start now you can see um where we are at the moment if you look at the bottom of the screen there's a little uh, arrow pointing downwards at about five kilometers we are just about to swing in land and start going up those lumps now then i have to say uh, some of these are steeper than others and there's some ramps in there that are going to break this uh, peloton right up and uh, it, it's quite realistic going up the bumps in in De Velo. i can tell you it's, that's it we're swinging inland now at the front you see yep snaver leading the way already two three percent up that hill and uh, it gets worse i can tell you uh, some of the other challenges now it's uh, tim hampton going for it now he's uh, he's got some power as tim we know that he's <laughs> 
two firsts and a second so far in the series. Matt James, one of his teammates behind him. Are they going to work in unison now? Matt James taking it up for Tim Hampton. But they've been chased by Soren Linka from BHC, who've got quite a few in. Dan Simpson leading the rest now for R3R. Morton Veng, no team. Uh, fourth last time out, you remember. Uh, Daniel Keller, another BHC. BHC strong up here at the moment. Several riders in that. King Tubby for R3R. And uh, tenth place is... Uh, we see uh, Alex Gold, a three-second gap from the front. Now, these four have got away at the front. Uh, there's a little group of three chasing them, but the stringing out has happened. Will these four, uh, maybe seven, but you look at how strung out it is. There's no bunch there anymore. Is a 4% gradient. It's taking its toll, and it's Tim Humpton doing the work. He can last the distance. We know that. We've seen it in other races. Just look at that. That is one straight line going up there. Zeb Norman in 10th uh, for Electra Spirits. Uh, Carl Axel is the person. We haven't mentioned him yet. Uh, a rider I've known for a little while from other platforms. Uh, fantastic rider too. Uh, Sven Kessie Dresse here last time for BHC. Uh, Stephen Ludenoff, I think the first time in one of these. Jorgen Van Burs, uh, I've been known for years. Ingmar and Jorgen are related. Both ride for Rassio Racing, of course. Evan Oysenson, um riding from R3R. Sorry, I thought he was... Uh, ECKD, but I beg your pardon, he's R3R, isn't he? So I got that wrong. Bruno Sesson, we've known for a while. Uh, it says no team there. He rides for ADR, Italian. Uh, Alex Gold, SDRT, that saddle drunk racing team. Uh, one of our local clubs and good friends too. So looking at the front here, uh, we're watching Daniel uh, Kerrer, who's in second place. Uh, Tim Humpton uh, just being taken over uh, by Matt James, his uh, teammate. Still some pressure on, but it hasn't formed into such a small group as I might have expected here. Um, you can see all the way back to 10th, only a two-second gap to Dan Stimson. So this hill hasn't been as damaging as I might, as I thought it might have done, although you can see a big gap between this lead impact and the rest. Uh, hitting about 8% for a little while there uh, as they go over the top of the biggest climb. Now, they go through that uh, red and white arch, which always looks like a sort of King of the Mountains finish, and you think, great, but there's three little lumps here. Now, none of them are quite as tough as what they've just been over, but... Each one does give a little attack point. So we've got now a group of seven riders uh, pretty much uh, on their own there. Uh, watching Jorgen van Burs, who's actually 19th, actually, in this uh, group of seventh. So you can see it's split into little pelotons. My, my view on this quite often is if you do split, it's best to be in a group rather than solo, because at least... Uh, you know, you can work together and it's not going to be too... <laughs> great photography, great camera work, Damon. <laughs> You'll have him on Chase the Yellow as well, I assure you. <laughs> it's uh, Sren Linda again, pushing up 8 6%. Like I said, even on these little subsidiary ones, you get those 8% and it hurts. But it hasn't really broken up, has it? Sren Linda got away. He's got two seconds on that little group. But I don't think it's going to really, really count. There's a long, stra straight, flat section uh, coming up after these little bumps. And I'm sure that the group will catch up. Fantastic views from the air again. As we go through one of those uh, finishing lines, not one we're using uh, up here in Lakeland. And the group has pulled Soren back, as we might have predicted. So this leading group now of nine riders. And uh, then a five-second gap uh, to Daniel Kerr. But you can just see in the distance, he's come through the arch. But nobody, you can't see anybody behind that. Uh, Daniel, could he get on? It's out to eight seconds. He's losing ground. So I think the split is nine. Nine seconds now. Daniel is behind 11 seconds. And uh, this is strung out a little bit as uh, Thomas Williams now, uh, no team, putting on some pressure. Uh, nicely uh, decked out in Indy Velo colours. Slightly confusing because I always think of that as OTR colours. But uh, there we are. Perhaps there's a trend for... Um, Black, white and green. Um, Moonrider's another team that use that kit as well, aren't they? Or those the colour combination, I should say. Tim Humpton up there, as always, uh, dictating the race. Uh, he really is the personality of the race at the moment. He is the man to beat. So, uh, and he's got one hell of a finish on him. Um, we did that. Uh, the first couple of races, I kind of thought he sat in and waited and then uh, just made everybody pay at the end. But uh, the, this race and the one before, he uh, did more than his fair share on the front. Looking a bit further back, we've got Rasmus Feldball here from uh, ECKD uh, amongst King Tubby, R3R. Uh, Kera's back with them as well, of course, by now. He's been called up by Henrik Osboberg um, is in there as well. Uh, 
Love the race SRT. Evan Oysenson, R3R. Love it. Carl Berg, uh, Yep Snaver, R3R. Uh, top Jimmy, West London, 23rd. Uh, 40 seconds off now, but, um, and that's from Andrew Kuchetsky. Uh, Andrew Kuchetsky, I hadn't noticed you in there. Run the Ratio Riders. Great to have you, Andrew. Um, known him for a few years now uh, from Manchester, Polish guy. Uh, absolutely fantastic chap as well. Do you meet so many friends through your sea racing? You wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't think so, but uh, it really is a community thing, isn't it? Great to have you back there, Andre. And uh, who else we've got? And Jorgen van Burs is saying Mars. Uh, I think they're brothers. Um, not entirely sure, but they're certainly related. So we look at this little group. Matt James uh, on the front there. So looking now at the um, front group, we've got Thomas Williams uh, out there. We can see two different groups there. Um, Thomas Williams is uh, taking the lead, but this is a little uh, packed up bunch now, isn't it? Um, the nine riders that we spoke of are probably going to form uh, the winning group, aren't they? 11.3k in and 11.3 to go, which tells you that we're right slap bang in the middle of the race. Now we're heading um, southwards, and we've got, well, I say we're going southwards. When you first come back out onto the uh, Island, you're actually heading eastwards, and uh, if you look at the top right hand uh, box up there in the top left hand corner of the top right hand corner box, uh, if you're still with me, <laughs> there's a bit narrow and it keeps moving. That's the wind direction. Now, uh, my experience of this uh, is that um, you keep getting the wind direction change, so at the moment, they've clearly got a side wind um, coming from their left off the coast, and uh, you can see as we go around one of these coves, you'll see the arrow turn, and all of a sudden they'll get a headwind. It'll be interesting to watch um, if they slow down at those key points, especially the rise on the front. And uh, you'll see now it turns into the wind. So now we've suddenly got this headwind. It won't last very long because if you look at the map, uh, we're going to go on a right hand turn, which takes us out the wind again. And uh, I suspect the wind only really hurts for sustained periods. I mean, certainly when I wrote this, I wrote it solo, so I didn't have the benefit of sitting on anybody's wheel. Um, the bots weren't very kind to me that day, shall I say. But uh, as I say, I think uh, if you look where um, Carl Axel Pan uh, Xander Pedersen is, uh, he's probably in quite a good position there, sitting uh, coolly on the back, taking the draft. And uh, behind him is 21 seconds back to Andre uh, Kuczewski and uh, Stephen Levendorf. Uh, Heinrich in there as well, Jorgen van Burs, Ratio Racing, and uh, so forth. 21 second gap, but it's nice to see a little group. I mean, I do like uh, it when there's a second group because they can have their own race and they can um, obviously have their own little sprint finish for 21st position or whatever it may be, uh, and I still think it makes for an exciting race. So, uh, yeah, I, I do like it when it's kind of grouped like this. So, the nine riders. <laughs> We're looking at Andrew Krasuski in the second group now, though. I suspect that's, um, I think Andrew's picked that orange and black because it probably resembles a Ratio, uh, or maybe that's the kit Ratio have set themselves. It looks like a Ratio kit. Does it say it on there? No. I think he's made that up from the, yeah, so I'm guessing the orange and black there. If you see that sort of colour color combination, it's very likely to be Ratio. That'll be Andrew, uh, I'm for sure, uh, wearing the Ratio kit. You see another one of those R3R ones. And, um, you see Rasmus Feldball just going off the front there, uh, riding for East Cycle uh, Club of Denmark. Uh, they wear red, um, and again, uh, this is a made-up kit. Now, what you can do on uh, Indie Velo, if you haven't uh, tried this yet, if you are a paying customer, you can actually use your club's kit. It'll be, you know, if your club's set up and it's got a kit, it'll have all the writing on the name and everything. If you're a non-paying member, you're just beta testing at the moment, then you can make your own kit up, and what you can do... It's absolutely brilliant the way they do this. It's so, so much better than other platforms. Uh, the way you can make the jersey up, you can probably get something pretty close to the jersey you wanted and your club's kit. So uh, quite a few riders like the Rassia one that we saw Andrew in, uh, great approximations. So uh, Thomas Williams again out on the front in the first group as we go along the coast. It's fairly flat, but like I say, the wind direction uh, was the thing that kept fascinating me. Uh, just behind them at the moment. Uh, when I rode it solo, the wind, dire uh, the wind direction was making my speed sort of go up and down a little bit as I was going round. And um, Zeb Norman in there for Electric Spirit as well, uh, supporting uh, Tim Humpton. 
I guess. I don't know whether they're working as a team or just hope to, both happen to be in there. But Tim Hunton's got a great chance of winning this series. Uh, so why wouldn't you? Uh, Tim, uh, as I say, two firsts and a second. Very much the man to beat in this. And uh, I think... Uh, I mean, it'd be interesting. I mean, there's 10 races uh, in Series 1, and really to win the GC, you're going to have to enter probably 9 or 10 of those. Um, otherwise, you won't accumulate enough points. As we move into the next series, there'll be 13 races. Um, there will also be another classification uh, for your best six results. So if you're a rider that doesn't make all 13 races, um, you can still compete for the best of six competition. Your best six results will count. And uh, I think that always gives uh, some of the good riders a second chance to get a trophy. We should have the teams in by then. Uh, whether or not we get it at the tail end of this uh, series or not, I don't know. Uh, but I also like uh, to think that maybe sort of buying a couple of weeks for the teams thing is probably sensible to allow teams to set themselves up and get themselves all organised with enough riders in uh, to make it a proper team competition. So uh, it will be a couple of weeks before I make an official classification, but I will make sure that the results are published. So, looking at this, uh, watching Evan Oysterson, uh, R3R rider, um, he's sitting behind Henrik Oberg, uh, Jürgen van Pers, King Tubby, in there, of course, for R3R as well. Now, Tim Hampton, uh, he does this all the time, doesn't he? Uh, putting out a strong breakaway. Now, I think this is quite early, 7.5 kilometres to go, but, 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 and we go back through uh, where we came from, we are... Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's climbs to come. I mean, maybe, maybe if the uh, if he gets to the climb before everybody else, well, it's quite a way, isn't there? But uh, maybe not that much. So the first climb coming up, um, and if Tim can get over that uh, with a little bit of a gap, and everybody everybody else splinters behind, there'll be no group to really chase him, will there? So uh, maybe this is tactically astute. Um, if you do want to uh, practice these courses, we thoroughly recommend it. The uh, you know, we do publish on all our uh, all our publications, you know, what the list of races are that are coming up. So you can go and practice the courses. We do all publish, uh, we also publish on our YouTube channel, uh, a course preview where I just go out and ride it and talk about it. Uh, I don't ride as fast as these guys, and Tim's been caught, hasn't he? Look, they work together, they've done it. It's Victor Vilking, who's done it for BHC, and uh, Thomas Williams just behind him. So, all back together, nine riders, the same nine. This is where the winner's coming from. I think this next hill is going to be very, very interesting, isn't it? It's going to be quite telling. Still by the beach, though, at the moment. And uh, you, see, you can see where the road peels off a little bit uh, later. So uh, looking back here, we're watching uh, Andre Kajewski. And it is him, isn't it, in that orange and black. Well chosen, Andre. Uh, that was... Uh, Choice kit. Nice pellet on this, and it's here. Uh, Alex Gold's in there. Rob Miller, uh, love Rob Miller uh, from R3R. Um, nice guy. Uh, been speaking to him on social media for a little while, uh, and he does a lot for the sport as well. Uh, Carl Axel Pedersen raced with quite a few times. Rasmus Felpool, we've known for ages as well. Uh, great to have some of these characters back with us, and to everybody new, um, great to have you on board. Uh, these are great fun. Uh, we love what Indy Velo are doing, and very much. Uh, Big thanks to ZMS Esports for uh, letting us broadcast these as well, uh, working with Damon uh, to get this all together. And we're uh, looking forward to Chase the Yellow, which will have the same sort of uh, level. In fact, it gets better week by week because, um, like everything with this, we're only four races in on a new platform, beta testing. Uh, everything that Damon does with ZMS, everything that I do with this series, we are testing it out, seeing how it works and making sure that uh, it becomes... Viable, sustainable, and really fun uh, and, comp well, you know, I say competitive, fun competitiveness. We, we want you all to come along on a Monday night and thoroughly love it. Now, the support has been fantastic. Um, the series got going quite quickly. We're delighted with that. Uh, we want to make it better and better and better. And like I say, we were bringing in things like the six of the best, the team's classification. Uh, but at the moment, everything was sort of set up. Oh, I, I won't say in a hurry, but uh, not everything we wanted for the way we score our series uh, was there on Indy Velo from the get-go. They're coming inland now. You can see the split on this um, on this lump as they get near the top. It's had quite an effect, hasn't it? And uh, you can see it, how that splintered the group. I mean, whether or not they can get back to go, oh, dear, we've got casualty by the looks of things there. Not sure who that was. Uh, something blue. 
So looking at this group here, um, sort of Linda out front, the nine is down to five as we come off the top of the first of the two climbs. Quite steep, quite damaging. Uh, the gap back though to the next group, seven seconds. Um, Soren Lindner uh, in the group. It's Dan Stimson leading the other group, six seconds. Three at six seconds. Daniel Kerr and Sven Kessi Des, 12 uh, seconds. Um, so uh, actually, the uh, the group behind are not quite as far back as I thought they were. Um, but this group split into two. We've got the three have dropped off, and it's whittled down to six as we go through another one of those. Uh, Things. Here we are, here's the three, uh, Dan Stimson, Zeb Norman uh, from Electra Spirit and Carl Axel Pedersen, uh, as I say, who I know from other platforms, has been in the last two races here with us and it's great to have him on board. Uh, and the group behind them as we go back to uh, Daniel Kerrer, who is, uh, was once on that front group and got dropped. He was one of ten and it went down to nine, if you remember. He's back with these guys now, King Tubby, uh, Seven Stefan and a few others. And there's a gap back to Andre Krzyzewski, uh, Jürgen van Burs there as well. Uh, some great names, Victor Vilking, uh, now back at 19th. But uh, when you look at the size of these groups, you know, a little bit of a sprint finish uh, will shake all this up. And look how much, uh, look at that, as they go round the lake. It slows down a little bit, doesn't it? But uh, there is a cornering effect on Indy Velo. I don't think it's... Uh, profound but it's there so it's not that ridiculous spin around the corners that we see on other platforms but uh, i quite like it here's the course just a reminder we go along the coast around the lakes we come back down uh, along into the mainly into the wind then southwards uh, with side wind up around the uh, south lake uh, with those last two bumps we've done one of them uh, the way the geography of this island is, is that you basically if you turn in from the coast you will go upwards of course and uh, where the lakes are the lakes obviously sit in a bowl a crater if you like and they've got a lip around them so you, the secondary hill will usually be um, to get you into the lip of the lake uh, and then when you come out of the lake you'll have to go back out over that and then back down to the coast so the second lump that we see here the two lumps one is getting uh, coming off the beach up over the crater edge down into the bowl that is the lake and then we go along the flat and then we're now just about to leave the lake and you can see the uh, profile there the uh, rider's a little bit higher up than the water level because we're beginning to leave the lake now matt jones uh, in the front now uh, morton young thomas williams tim humpton son linda dan stimson uh, carl axel pedersen 10 seconds behind now and uh, that group of uh, five is uh, now away from the rest. It's... So, uh, we've got a group of three uh, behind here, and um, Carl Axel Pedersen, uh, we've got Carl Axel Pedersen, Dan Stimson, Zed Norman, I think, and uh, then a group behind them with Alex Golden, which I think is still quite a large group and might have a fantastic sprint at the end. Uh, and that's the other thing with these group, these races, if they do split up, uh, we get lots and lots of great sprint finishes. Now, you'll get points based on... Oh, look at this group. This is going to be fantastic when this lot come in, isn't it? Uh, watching King Tubby, R3R there. You can see the R3R. Two R3R jewelers is in there. King Tubby, the one at the front. And um, this group's going to be quite strong. I think there's some decent sprinters in there too. Alex Gold, certainly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this, this could be a good sprint when this lot come in. Um, nine of them. So, yeah, looking forward to that one to see how they get on... Um, the first group are over the top of the first hill and on the descent now, though, I see. Uh, sorry, the last hill. So, uh, Morton Young and the uh, five at the front, as we go back and look at the three just behind them, uh, the five at the front now have got uh, 28 seconds on these three. So, uh, these three are not going to make it back and they're going to have to work together just to stave off the group behind them that aren't that far behind them, are they? So, uh, there is a bit of a race on. It's not quite uh, a breakaway, but... Uh, they could get caught by this larger group behind them, which will make it even more interesting. Nevertheless, it's the uh, front five that I think uh, is going to carry the interest now. They're over the top of the last climb. It's downhill and along the coast for the leaders. It's, uh, <laughs> this is hotting up, isn't it? Can this group connect with the other three? Does that make it a 12? Uh, we've got somebody going off the front now. Matt James... Uh, Thomas Williams going off the front. He's got a second on everybody else. Uh, I think that's uh, 
a little bit brave. I don't think the other four will let him get away, um, particularly with Tim Humpton in that group. 28 seconds back to Zed Norman, but I, uh, and the King Tubby group at 39, so there's a, a 10 second gap between uh, the three and the, the uh, next big group. Thomas Williams is holding this, isn't he? He's got a second. It's not a lot. He's got a second on them. Uh, there's no more climbs to come. Um, if you can time trial all the way home, uh, it's only 800 metres. He might have done enough and created enough of a gap to do this, you know. Uh, it's, down, it's up to three seconds to the other four. I think he's going to do it. It's come. The gap is coming out. Three seconds. It was one for ages. And uh, Tim, Ham Tim Hampton losing a little bit of ground for a moment there. A little bit worried. Um... Oh, hang on, though. No. Tim Humpton is chasing down Thomas Williams. It isn't over yet. A two-second gap. 500 metres to go. I think Tim's going to take that. Uh, Soren Linda now is also on the chase. Tim goes powering by, as we've seen him do in the other races. And he's being chased by Soren Linda again from BHC. Soren did this last time. <laughs> <He's>, uh, <laughs> these two. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Tim's holding the gap, isn't he? With 100 metres, oh, well, somebody else is coming in now. It's Matt, it's Matt James. It's Matt, oh dear, oh dear. Matt James takes it, and will Tim Hampton takes it? Oh, I think Tim Hampton even just nicked that. I'm sorry, and on the line, uh, Morton Young, Thomas Williams uh, coming in there. Oh, dear. We have to wait to the end now. Uh, oh, dear, I think Tim Hampton. Uh, I thought he took Soren Linda, but the results are suggesting that it was Soren Linda who just held on by probably the width of a tyre. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, uh, but it's looking like Soren just held that. Uh, Carl Axel Pedersen now steaming home. Oh, everybody else just tried to nick a place on the line. You get points for where you finish. The time gaps don't really mean a lot. Um, you know, it's 100. Um, Alex Gold just coming in there. And <laughs> hey... That group split up a little bit at the end, didn't it? It wasn't quite the sort of bunch sprint I might have liked. Jorgen van Burr's coming in, Rassio Racing there, and uh, Heinrich Obberg for SRT. Looking back, here's uh, Andre Kajewski, as uh, we mentioned earlier. He's uh, now in a solo position, unfortunately. I'm guessing that he lost, uh, lost the others, but... Uh, oh, dear, that's a bit wonky. I don't know quite what happened there. Um, obviously... Uh, Obviously, a bit of a side wind. That'll be it. That must be what it is. I told you it was realistic on here. Look, the wind's pointing it sideways. Um, it's, uh, we'll put it down to that, shall we? So, uh, watching Andre uh, coming in now. Um, that, that, those bunch finishes, uh, it didn't quite happen for the third group, like we said. Uh, the one at the end, though, whoa, my word, did Matt James uh, produce a finish there. Soren just about holding on from Matt. Uh, oh, did some Tim Humpton. Uh, that was cracking. I think Andre just sort of rolled over the line there. Let's just have a look at this again. At this moment, you're looking at that thinking, well, no, it's, it, Tim can't make it up. But look at Tim go right at the end. And, yeah, I think I think Soren just held that. Another metre, and that would have been Tim's, wouldn't it? Top Jimmy now. Um, guessing is the one in the blue because uh, he rides for us. That was one of the R3R riders and a couple of others. Uh, it's a top Jimmy uh, pulling away a little bit. 500 metres to go. He's not going to get away with that. They're not having it. R3R, um, the R3R rider now powering through. Will, Tim, will Jimmy hold on? In fact, it's a couple of the others that are now... Uh, it's Marino Sesson in the green who's uh, pushing it. Uh, the R3R rider now coming through. Top Jimmy isn't out finished yet. He's sitting on the wheel. Uh, he's probably going to... Oh, I don't know. And he just in the catch-up he sat up I think there but he's pulled it back again well done James well done James as they come to the line and it's Marino Sesson absolutely steaming for it Top Jimmy just in front but the R3R rider is going no Top Jimmy just held it off uh, that was fantastic well done James uh, James from Uxbridge of course and uh, who we've got now Fleming back uh, great to see you back as well um, I haven't seen you for a while uh, looking at the results down the side, uh, confirmation that Soren held on there. Matt James, the winner uh, for Electric Spirit. Uh, Soren Linda breaking that up, no team. Tim Hunton, uh, third. Oh, he's slipping now. Uh, beaten by one of his teammates this time as we watch uh, Fleming back. Just coming in now. Uh, great finish. Thanks, uh, for, thanks for joining us. Oh, look at this one. Oh, look at that. Not sure who that was, but uh, 
that was uh, that was a fantastic little sprint at the end. I think this might. Uh, who's this? Uh, Richard Gate. Uh, good to see you, Richard. Uh, well, we watch Richard come in. He's got 450 metres to go. I don't think there's anyone uh, near him. But uh, looking at the results again, uh, so Tim Hampton settling for third there in a fantastic finish. Morton Vane, uh, fourth for the second re running. Thomas Williams, who did so much work uh, on the front, taking a fifth place, well earned. Sven Kesse, Dresse and Carl Axel Zander Person coming sixth and seventh, respectively, just ahead of Dan Simpson. R3R, don't forget, uh, Team Tuesdays tomorrow on Indy Velo, uh, run by R3R and Dan. Zeb Norman, uh, well done, Zeb. Ninth, Alex Gold settling for tenth. Uh, great stuff, Alex. Uh, sorry, Pete couldn't make it tonight. King Tubby from R3R. It's R3R all the way down, isn't it? King Tubby from R3R beating Rasmus Feldball. Uh, Rob Miller from R3R beating Daniel Kerr. Uh, Stefan uh, Ludendorff, uh, Ludendorff at 15th. Jorgen van Bers at uh, 16th. Heinrich Oberg from SRT at 17th. Andre Kajewski, Rassio Racing, 18th. Victor Vilkum at uh, 19th. Evan Oysensen, R3R at 20th. How many R3R? Three R riders in there, at least four in that top twenty. Fantastic stuff. As we watch uh, Clive Byam from OTR uh, coming in now, I think he might go down on the official results as Indy Velo Founders Club, but he's definitely an OTR rider. Yang uh, Yang uh, Hansen is coming in next uh, round this headland again. It's um, quite interesting how late you see the finish when you ride this course because um, there you are look 120 meters to go and it just comes into focus which is another reason why it's good to go and practice the courses uh, before you do them and as i say we do a preview um, so even if you haven't got time to get on a smart trainer uh, you can sit on the bus or train or something or whatever you do when you go to work uh, and do that uh, brett smith now in the pink and blue um just in front of somebody who i'm not sure brett rides for west london and um South African living in Slough. Uh, he's just uh, he's just ahead of Adrian Bennett here. Uh, I wonder if Adrian's just coolly sitting on the wheel. 1.2k to go. I think Adrian is deliberately taking the wheel, and Brett might be burning some uh, matches here and get uh, taken on the line. This will be interesting. 1.1k to go. So that's it. 1k to go. We're in the final k, but you don't see. Oh, Adrian's going for it now. Will Brett have anything left to sit on the wheel? Brett now just sitting on the wheel, but oh, impetuously just getting on the side of him, whereas he could be better sitting on the wheel here, I would have said. I don't know if they've been working together, uh, and therefore this is a case of taking turns. Uh, I'm not really sure. Side by side at the moment, uh, not a lot in it. It's hard to tell if uh, anybody's got more in their legs than the other. Uh, we don't get those physical signs like we do in real racing, do we? And uh, Adrian just slightly ahead, so I'm guessing Brent. Uh, Brett's just got a little bit of... Um, draft advantage he's slipping back a half a wheel there uh, i don't know if that's significant or not uh maybe not 600 meters to go we're going to go around this headland don't forget you don't see the finish till 100 i think adrian might just be eking out a little bit of a gap there it's not a lot but if that's a sign of brett being tired um then I think it might be Adrian's. The gap's getting a little bit bigger. Uh, maybe Brett's just uh, sitting on the wheel, though. And the other thing is, uh, Adrian, in doing that, might be putting on the pressure and actually burning matches himself. So uh, hard to tell. You can't tell from an avatar. There's no facial expression here, is there? <laughs> Only because we're looking the wrong way. I mean, the avatars are that great that if we were at the front... Um, shut up. No. OK. And Adrian has pulled away. It looks. Oh, I think Brett's putting in a bit of power, though. I don't think it's over. Brett is responding. Brett is responding. 150 metres to go. Brett looks like he's going past him, but it's still a long way out. It isn't over yet. Or is it? Brett's looking very, very strong, but Adrian is not beat. He is now. It's Brett's to take. Well done. And uh, that was a fantastic little duel between the two of them. So, Neil Pugh, another one of the OTR riders, as I said, if you see green, white and black, it's probably an OTR rider. Uh, a great club they are too. Uh, they do so much for online racing. Uh, very much uh, helping out with uh, other things too, uh, especially James Ogilvy. And uh, as I say, looking out for things coming uh, Look out for all the OTR uh, races. And uh, the team time trials are fantastic. So uh, if you've got a team, get your, get your team into those. And uh, also don't forget Chase the Yellow coming on the 29th of August uh, with ZMS. ZMS very much involved with all of these uh, types of events and uh, great uh, service too. So just looking uh, now, we were, uh, we've got Neil Pugh here coming in at uh, 21 kph. 
rolled in over the finish and well done Neil great to see you here again the 13 more still apparently um, so we're not I think we're probably not going to go back to the others let's uh, remind ourselves of the race uh, Saddle Jump getting in a 10th uh, uh, just behind Zeb Norman three electric spirit, electric spirit uh, riders in the uh, top nine all three are not uh, not the team of the week now um, Matt James pulling up that fantastic finish uh, Soren Lindner beating Tim Humpton again but uh, oh wow that was uh, that's, uh, I'll tell you these two I think the story of this series could well end up being Soren versus Tim in the sprint. Absolutely fantastic. Morten Vang again, the Norwegian, taking a fantastic fourth ahead of Thomas Williams from New Zealand. Sven Kessi Dresse from uh, Germany, sixth place for BHC. Uh, BHC with two riders in there as well. So uh, BHC, Electric Spirit and R3R, very much looking like the strong teams in this at the moment. Um, Carl Axel uh, Sander Pedersen put in yet another great finish, just beating Dan Simpson from uh, R3R. Remember, team, uh, team uh, Tuesday teams tomorrow uh, on Indy Velo. Zeb Norman, Electric Spirit, what a team. And my good friend Alex Gold for Saddle Drunk. Uh, his teammate Pete Mills uh, injured this week, unfortunately. But uh, I think Alex will be very happy with 10th place uh, there. Uh, time gaps, I mean, you're looking, um, you're looking at 12 seconds. Uh, from 1st to 10th, and it did split out into little groups. Uh, but even, uh, I, I suspect, even the uh, group that Alex was in, uh, I think splintered right at the end. So we didn't quite get the group sprint uh, finish that I had half anticipated. But, hey, this is the excitement. If you knew what was coming, it wouldn't be fun, would it? Uh, I can tell you what is coming, though. We'll be back next week. Uh, and uh, we've got... Uh, a lot of coast and a bit of a lump in the middle of the island for you. So um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I rode uh, next week's course a couple of days ago, and it, uh, I think it's going to make for a very, very interesting race. Uh, there is a preview on our YouTube site if you want to go and have a look at it. Um, I will be getting all the standings and results up uh, in the next couple of hours. Uh, you can see the website address on the right of your screen, westlondoncycling.com. Uh, That's westlondoncycling.com. Uh, give me a couple of hours and I'll have everything up there for you to examine and you'll be able to see all the standings uh, as they unfold. Uh, another fantastic race. Can't thank the riders enough. Um, this is an amazing series. Only four weeks into it. A, a platform that's beta testing and it's delivering so much. ZMS um, are working around the clock to put these uh, broadcasts together because uh, it is a new platform and we all have to learn how to do it. I mean, we've been serviced fantastically by Indy Velo. We've gone back and said, uh, this is from West London. Uh, we, we've said, look, kind of, this is how we want to score the points. This is what we want to do. They've been absolutely brilliant. Um, we got the team, we got the individual scoring uh, fairly quickly. That was in the first week or so. The team scoring we're just working on now. Um, it looks like it functions, but I think I might wait another couple of weeks at least just so that the teams can start getting some uh, riders in uh, and we haven't got lopsided teams. But... Uh, so far, so good. This has been a fantastic uh, race again. Uh, not one of the individual races has disappointed us. Uh, and it's you guys racing that make it. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next Monday. Race 1.5 is coming. Thank you.